how many times have you been guilty of taking your frustration, your anger out on something we should all practice and all do? Many of us don't. Hello, I'm Hayden Bluefield and welcome to part two of Napoleon Hill's 25 factors to a pleasing personality. If you haven't seen part one, we'll be going through the first 15. I'll try and remember to put a card in the corner so you can go back and watch that right before we kick into the last 10 of the major factors of a pleasing personality. So let's get stuck straight in. Number 16 is good, clean sportsmanship. Nobody likes a sore loser. Okay, my friends that play games with me will say I'm terrible for this, like game of Monopoly, game of Risk, any kind of board game, I am a friggin' terrible loser at. I think I've got better at that, but yeah, I was, I did get in a bit of a strop. Now I just enjoy the idea of playing a game. I'm, uh, I can get a bit weird in my own head about losing games, but I'm getting better at it. I'm, I'm aware that it's a flaw. Number 17, something we should all practice and all do. Many of us don't, but just common courtesy. Open the door for someone, always saying please and thank you. Just very basic, costs you nothing, takes no effort, no extra time to your day. It's just quite simply, someone lets you out, oh, thanks for that, off you go and drive. Or you got a bit of a dilemma getting through the traffic, let the other person go through. Whatever it is, just common courtesy, with a smile, just make someone's day. I, talking of which, I think that should be one in itself. Just smile. It probably is in some way or other related to one of the points. Number 18, appropriateness of personal adornment. Yeah, I'm a YouTuber and wear what like. I guess this is some, I think this is something where barriers are being broken down a bit in the modern era. As I said, this book is decades old. And now in a more modern society, this would be funny if you're watching this in 10 years time, but back here in the 2020s, you can kind of wear what you want now. And especially in a community that's been more open to the LGBTQ plus community is that we can identify what, how we identify and we can express ourselves in a way we wish to express ourselves. Yes, there are formalities in certain circumstances and traditions to align with, for example, what to wear or not what to wear at a wedding, or if you're at a formal business meeting, I couldn't like rock up like this in a formal business meeting. But I think in a lot of things day to day, especially, well, in the work that I'm doing, like going out gardening, YouTubing, there really, and skateboarding, there really is no attire that you have to stick to or really have to think about too much. I do enjoy wearing a suit though, I never get to wear one. And then when I wear one, I feel like I'm just an imposter in some sort of world that I don't belong in anyways. <laughs> but I do enjoy wearing a suit. Number 19, good sportsmanship, based on being able to do and say the right thing. This is something that, take Stephen Barlett, founder of Social Chain, he's co-founder Dominic. When Dominic's spoken about Stephen Barlett, he says one of the key things about Stephen in his ability to be successful is his keen astuteness in knowing how to act in every situation, knowing the exact person that the person they're discussing with needs Stephen to be. He can be that person for them. Whether it's charismatic, graceful, confident, loud, quiet, he's just able to understand, read, and therefore act in the way that's appropriate. Not to say he's false, but just to say that he's got a key set of skills, he's got different aspects to his personality, and he knows which need to be brought to the surface in that moment. And that's just a keen understanding of human psychology essentially. So it's just a case of having that understanding of psychology and being able to act. And it's something that I've not always been good at, but something that I feel like I've improved on. And I think overall just having a good positive temperament will sort of win you over in most situations. Number 20, going the extra mile. And this is something that I suppose in my business I always wanted to do. And then as I was starting to get fed up with things, it was becoming ever more challenging to go the extra mile. However, now that it's just me, I can kind of just do, th I'm happy to just chuck things in extra. Or if someone wants something done, I'm happy just to, if it is quite swift and easy for me to do while I'm there, it's something that I'm quite happy to go the extra mile for people, especially if they make tea and biscuits. And this is something hopefully comes across, I'm doing the YouTube channel, just trying to create as much content as I can, trying to make sure it's as good as I can make it. And constantly evaluating to see what's wrong with the con or not what's wrong, but what could be better? How can I improve it? Especially in like podcasting, seeing, okay, I've had that conversation. It went really well. What do I take away from that? What can I improve on for next time? If I was to have that conversation again, what would I want to do differently to make it better? And then should I just invite the person on again? <laughs> so I think this can be applied to yourself as well, in just terms of looking after yourself and going the extra mile to make sure that if you look after your own mind, your mental state, your emotions, your physical health as well, do go the extra mile for yourself to make sure that you can go the extra mile for others. 21, temperance. I suppose I'm quite good at staying away from things. I do drink occasionally, but that's something that I'd, I can see myself being teetotal one day, but hmm, I don't know, what do you think? Maybe being a bit tipsy is quite handy. And 
going on to, if anyone listens to the Diary of a CEO, Matt Hancock was on there and he was talking about Nigel Farage will always have a couple of pints before a like, news media interview. Otherwise, he can't talk, apparently. So, something to bear in mind. 22, patience and understanding of people. And this is something that a lot of us lack a lot of the time, especially in short bursts when we have interactions with strangers. Like, how many times have you been guilty of taking your frustration, your anger out on somebody that's literally got no control over the situation and they're just... They're unfortunately just the person that's been put in between you and the solution or the problem. They're in the middle of it. Heart goes out to every person that works in the call centre right now. <laughs> and this is something that every teacher has an incredible, bountiful amount of that is muchly underappreciated, I think, just to be able to be patient, sympathetic, empathetic with people and just work towards helping improve people and help them get to the place they need to be. Something that I'm trying to work on a lot in terms of understanding. I think I've always been quiet patient at time or quite understanding of people i'd like to think maybe not so patient but i've definitely improved over the last few years now that i'm not in such a rush and i have a much nicer lifestyle i've been able to tick this one a lot more <clears throat> 23 gracefulness in posture and overall body carriage i'm quite aware of it i remember it all hit me when i was at one of the secret leaders podcast live events and rich the producer he grabbed a photo of me sitting in like the chair on the stage and I saw the photo and I was just like arched over so bad. I was like, I literally can't do anything with this photo because I'm so bad. And from that moment, I was like, okay, always make sure you've got a nice straight posture. I say that, but like I'm kind of sitting awkwardly here. So it's if I sit up straight, I'm kind of out of the, out of the way. So yeah, forgive me for this situation right here. I've got to tweak myself in a weird position. But maybe one day I'll have a studio. 24, humility of the heart. It's I'd say I've always been pretty good at this. I've never really been like never grow my ego about the things that I can achieve. There's times when I've recognized achievements, but generally, I always think this in skateboarding, like you get a lot of humility in skateboarding in terms of if someone does a trick, someone's filming, when we go out filming generally, I compare it to like football, you score a goal and you run around celebrating, dancing and cheering and boasting your own achievement. In skateboarding, it's something that's often quite the opposite of you land your trick and there's no, you're not the one celebrating, everybody else is celebrating on your behalf. And I suppose there is a lot of humility in that I've always recognized. So I suppose I can tick that box myself. Now for the last one, hopefully you found these all beneficial and going through the last 24. Maybe I'm being a bit confident on myself. Do you think I've ticked too many boxes that I shouldn't have? I've certainly found some things that I need to improve on. Unfortunately, this last one, Napoleon Hill talks about in the book as being something that you can't really learn or be taught. It's something you either have or you do not have. But what do you think that last thing could be? The last one on the list, number 25, is personal magnetism. Just your sheer ability to ignite people's excitement, inspire them, motivate them, encourage them to be in your presence, enable them to feel an elation by being surrounded by you, to have people, once they've left your presence, to be drawn back to it, to want to experience something with you again, to want to have that conversation, to want to re-engage in hanging out sharing a hobby sharing a conversation sharing an evening a weekend whatever it is but it's just that sheer ability that when you speak people want to listen as such but that fundamentally well on that subject that key note there of being a when you speak people want to listen i think that comes from first becoming a great listener which i'm working on i do understand what he says about it. it's not something that you can be taught i think it's something you can grow with confidence i think a lot of it is confidence confidence just draws people in people are more attracted if you are more confident and can compose yourself with this presence that is confident. So there's the 25, how do you think you've ranked? Let me know in the comments below if they've been helpful, let me know. If you liked the video, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get plenty more content.